Welcome to Modern Testing and PHP with Codeception. My name is Jeffrey Way, and I will be your host throughout this entire course. And yeah, like its title says, the name of the game is Behavior Driven Development, specifically as it relates to PHP. So we have various testing tutorials and courses available throughout Touch Plus. For example, on NetTouch, we have a session called Test Driven PHP. We have a course also called Test Driven PHP in Action. And then I've even written books on how to test specifically in certain frameworks like Laravel. But what we haven't covered in enough detail is behavior-driven development. And in my opinion, no tool has been able to better implement that idea than Codeception. So Codeception isn't brand new. It's been around for maybe a little bit over a year at the time of this recording. But what's really great about it is it breaks things down into exactly what you need to do. So take a look at this snippet, or better yet, let's go to the quick start just to take a quick peek at what we can do. Now we'll skip the installation, we'll go through all of that, but take a look right here. So when you're writing a basic test, you just instantiate a class called WebGuy, and there's gonna be a few different ones, like a test guy and a web guy. You'll learn more about that soon. Then we declare what we want to do. Well, I want to ensure that the front page works. And then we write it exactly like maybe the client would say. Well, they'll say, well, I am on the home page and I expect to see the text home. Or I expect to see uh, the word home within an H1 tag. Or I expect to see within the database this row. All of this can be done using an incredibly readable syntax. So I really think you're going to love it. So in this lesson, our only goal is to download Codeception and reproduce this basic test. And then beyond that, we'll dig into some more complex stuff. All right, let's get started. Well, we can download Codeception through Packagist, and that's what I recommend. If I go to Packagist and I search for Codeception, you'll see there it is. Now, if you're not familiar with Packagist, these are packages that we can download using Composer. Now again, if you're not familiar with Composer, well, yes, that's something you'll need to learn too. Even though it's not required, you can download a standalone zip file for Codeception, but I'd like everyone to get into the habit of using Composer and packages to pull in their packages. This is absolutely how you'll be doing it in the future, so go ahead and learn it. But trust me, it's really very easy. So I will walk you through the entire process, excluding the installation part for Composer, but I'll give you a quick overview. So you will need to install it, and on a Nix system, you could just install it globally right here. So you could just copy those two lines and paste them in, and now, when you move your composer.far to user local bin, you'll be able to run composer and immediately see a list of all of the various commands. Super simple. So if I switch back to packages and we scroll down, let's pull in the master branch. Or if you want something a bit more stable, you can choose maybe 1.6.2. And in fact, you might want to do that for your projects. That way you know at all times you're working with a stable release. But I want to use some of the new stuff. So let's go ahead and copy this. Next, I'm going to switch back to the terminal. I've created a new folder called Chapter 1. And let's open up an editor. So the first thing we want to do is create a composer.json file. Now within here, we're going to add an object. And we have two choices. You have require, and then you also have require dev. Now, the only difference between these two is that for require, this will list the dependencies that everyone will need in order to use your tool or utility. But require dev will be things specifically for you during the development process. So maybe if you have some kind of logging tool, or maybe there's a testing tool like Codeception or PHP unit, all of that should be placed within your require dev block. So let me go ahead and just paste that in like so, and that's it. I can escape out, and now we can run Composer, Install, and I'm going to add on the Dev Switcher option, and that says I want to install all dependencies as well as the development dependencies. Now you'll probably want to give that just a moment or so, but I'll use the magic of screencasting to fast forward. Now while this is downloading, in fact, let's switch back over to Packagist, and I want you to take a note that Codeception builds upon lots of tools. So it builds upon Behat, it builds upon PHP unit. Take a look at the list of requires here. So we have, it uses Mink, which is a web driver. It uses some various Symfony components. It uses PHP unit. 
So basically, it takes all of these tools, which can be very difficult to understand the difference. So what is Behat? What is Mink? When would you use PHP unit? What about Gout? It gets a little complicated and overwhelming. But Codeception wraps all of this into a readable syntax that is a lot easier to use, in my opinion. So keep that in mind as we dig further into it. All right, and that looks to be finished. So once again, let's open up our editor. And if I open up the sidebar, I want you to note that we have this new vendor directory. So if we open up Composer, you'll see here's where we handle all of the auto-loading. Excellent. And that's something that comes free out of the box with Composer, free auto-loading. But what we are interested in is within the bin directory. So notice we have vendor, bin, codecep, as well as PHP unit. So that's something to keep in mind. If you're installing Codeception with Composer, well, you don't also need to reference PHP unit because Codeception lists PHP unit as a dependency. So it will pull that in for you. So that means now we can say vendor bin Codecept, and you'll see we have a list of the commands. Now, you probably don't want to type that every time. So you have a couple different choices. One, maybe temporarily you could add an alias. So you could say alias T for test equals vendor bin codecept, and you'd probably want to do run. But for now, let's just keep it like that. And if we do T, now we immediately see that. Another way, probably more realistically, is you can add vendor slash bin to your path, and then all you would need to do is write codecept. So you're adding a local path, vendor slash bin. You're not adding the full path to this directory. And that way, no matter what project you're in, the contents of vendor slash bin will be available in your path. And then you just run code set. And if I run that, you'll see I've already done that. So the first thing we want to do when we start a new project is run bootstrap. Initialize an empty test suite and default configuration file. So let's try that. Code set, bootstrap. And now you can see it created a bunch of different files. So specifically, it created this new test directory and it split your styles of tests so that you can trigger each one of them. And the reason why we do that is because, and you'll learn more about this in this course, but acceptance tests can take a lot longer because they mimic the customer or the user. So those will actually hit a database and click on buttons and things of that nature. So when those are so slow, we don't want that to hinder the performance of running our unit tests. So this way we can say, okay, while I'm testing this class, I only want to trigger the unit tests and I don't want to worry about acceptance. Let's switch back to MacVim. And now let's close this out. You'll see that we have this new test directory. So notice it created a lot of files. This is a little overwhelming, but trust me, it's very basic stuff actually. So we have three different styles of testing, acceptance, functional, and unit. And we're gonna cover each of those in its own lesson. But importantly, notice that each one is composed of modules, and that way you can extend the functionality of each suite. So here's functional. Notice it's going to use the file system and test helper, but maybe you are using a framework like Laravel. You can pull in a Laravel 4 module. Next, we have acceptance. And again, this is the only style of test in Codeception that will actually require a server to be running. And so with that in mind, it's important that you set the URL. And you'll probably want to do something like localhost 8000, something like that. But for now, let's keep it as it is. Next, close these out. We have your unit directory. And notice that it has a bootstrap file and a code guy. Next, you have functional with the test guy and acceptance with a web guy. So don't worry about those too much. Basically, those classes fill up the various methods that you can use based upon the modules that you declare. Now again, at first, this is very confusing stuff. I don't want you to worry about it too much. Let's keep it really simple and then we'll slowly step further into the waters. So we're gonna begin by generating a new test. And this time, let's do an acceptance test. We're going to generate, and we have two different styles. And this confused me at first. You have sept and cest. Uh, for now, let's do the sept format. And now it wants to know, well, what suite are we creating this test in? Do you want unit, functional, or acceptance? We're gonna do an acceptance test. And now it needs to know, well, what is the name of the test? Well, let's just say homepage. Now it created that. So if we open up the acceptance folder, you'll see that we created a new file called homepagecept.php, and it added just a touch of boilerplate for you. 
So one thing to keep in mind is that you can use this generator, or if you want, you can manually create the file. Just make sure that you follow this convention of the name of the file followed by sept.php. All right, so we have this syntax here, and I'm gonna hide the sidebar. I, notice that Codeception emphasizes using a variable called I, and that way it's a little bit more descriptive. I want to do this, so when I visit this page, then I expect to see that. It's a lot more readable. So we instantiate our WebGuy class. Next, we declare what we wanna do. Well, I want to verify that the home page welcomes me. Very simple test. So how could we write this? Well, first we need to declare, well, what page are we on? Well, we will say I am on page, and we'll just say we're at the root. So with a simple PHP application, this would be index.php. And now we're gonna say I see welcome. That's it. So now let's run this test. Now I could do code set run, and let's take a look at that. Well, notice at the top, it runs the acceptance suite. Notice that it failed. Then it runs the functional suite. Then it runs the unit. So codecept run will execute every single test that you have created. And in these early stages, this isn't a big deal. But once you get to the point where you have hundreds of tests, you will want to narrow that down. So we can narrow it down by running codecept run and then the name of the suite. So unit or functional or acceptance. Or you could add another suite, maybe something for your API. Now notice that it only executes that single suite, which is what we want. So here we see, all right, it could not verify that the home page welcomes me. Notice that this is what I want to is for. It's not actually doing any logic, it's just providing sort of like a message if you've ever used PHP unit. If I remove that, notice that it just says the name of the file. And when you have hundreds of tests, that can be a little difficult. So we always wanna make sure we declare what are our intentions with this test. And once we include that, we can make it a little bit more readable. Could not verify that the home page welcomes me. So we can see, well, I couldn't see welcome because all I saw was a 404 page. And that's because first, we don't even have a server running. So let's do that first. We're going to create an index.php. And you know what? Why don't we do this within a split pane? Index.php. And let's just keep it blank for now. Next, I will open up a new tab browse into the chapter one folder, and boot up a server using PHP 5.4. Great, but if I come back and I run it again, still we're going to see a 404 page. And that's because we want to make sure that within the test directory, the acceptance suite points to the correct URL. And in this case, it doesn't. So we're going to say HTTP localhost 8888, like so. Now, if I run it one more time, we're gonna get a different error. Good. So we can see the current node list is empty. And this is a little confusing at first, but it's just saying, well, there are no nodes because I read an empty page. So why don't we fix that right now? Let's say I'll add just a little bit of text here. Save that, run it one more time. And now it's gonna say, all right, well, I loaded that page, but on step two, I failed because I expected to see the text welcome, but I didn't. So let's close that out, write welcome, save it one more time, and we're to green. Excellent, notice how easy that is. You're just declaring how you want to interact with your application. Now you don't wanna get crazy, you don't want to test every possible path through your code because that can get really slow. But you do wanna use acceptance tests to define overarching goals. For example, I wanna have a login system so that I can access private data, or I want to have a bookmarking system so that I can remember to read various articles or tutorials or courses. And like I said, we'll discuss this a lot more in the course. Now, the final thing we want to do is specify that we want to see welcome specifically within an H1 tag. We want the heading one to say welcome. We run it again, and now we're back to failing. So let's make it pass. H1, welcome. Run it one more time. And now we're back to green. So great, that's all we're gonna do in this lesson, but we've done a lot actually. We've learned a little bit about Composer. So we created a Composer file. We were given auto-loading absolutely for free out of the box, but we're not using that quite yet. And then we wrote our first acceptance test to define that when we visit the homepage, we expect to see the text welcome within an H1 tag. 
So make sure you have this committed to memory, and when you're ready, let's move on to lesson two.